The Frederick County Public Schools Earth and Space Science Lab is a treasure trove of wonder here in Frederick County. It's a place unlike any other where kids and adults can let their imagination soar and learn about our planet, our solar system, and even beyond. Going back to 1962, if you've been a student in FCPS, you've seen it. The famous glow-in-the-dark hallway, the array of fascinating creatures, the jaw-dropping planetarium experiences, and all the fabulous Earth science exhibits filled with hands-on learning. Here's a look back at the 50 years of magic at the Earth and Space Science Lab. Let's start at the beginning when what would become the ESSL was just a small gymnasium. During that time, the space race was heating up and the Soviet Union's success of Sputnik spurred the United States government to enhance their funding for science education. The superintendent of FCPS in 1961, Dr. James Sensenball, saw an opportunity for FCPS to have something special, and a young teacher by the name of Ned Kearns caught his attention. Mr. Kearns had a college background in astronomy and geology, which was something rare in those days. Dr. Sensenball said, are you familiar with planetariums? And I had been to uh, the Hayden in New York, and uh, I said, yeah, I've, I've been to one. He said, well, we have one. And uh, we would like you uh, to run it. In February of 1961, the Board of Education approved an expenditure of just over $15,000 for the purchase of a planetarium projector. But if you had asked anyone about planetariums, they would have thought you were from another planet. I could honestly say that most people had no idea what a planetarium was. Uh, in fact, a neighbor of mine, when I got appointed, this is a sort of a side, said, you're going to have the most beautiful yard in the neighborhood. And I said, why? And she said, well, aren't you the director of the plant, plant, plant? I said, I said no, it's a planetarium and it has to do with astronomy. So construction began. It was the dawn of a new era. Ned began working with FCPS Facilities Services in designing the layout and recruited teachers to help create the look and feel of the planetarium. It was then that Mr. Kearns had an idea for what has remained one of the building's biggest attractions up until this very day, the glow-in-the-dark hallway. It looked fancy, but uh, uh, to get the, 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 the constellations, I just used an opaque projector and, and projected uh, an image of the constellation onto butcher paper and drew outline, cut that out, taped it, and then used uh, Krylon fluorescent paint. Uh, stuff has to be good, it lasted 50 years. The way kids would light up when they walked in, and particularly that first year. They would come with their white shirts or their white <laughs> And of course, in, under the fluorescent light, the, the white just lit up like you wouldn't believe. And then there was the projector. Armand Spitz, who had produced planetarium models in previous years, was now primed to produce his masterpiece, the Spitz A3P planetarium projector. Unlike his previous efforts, this new model had a spherical star projector and mechanized motions for the sun, moon, planets, and lunar phases. This became the trademark at the ESSL for the next 47 years. When we put this Spitz in, this facility behind me here, uh, there were only 25 of them in existence. Uh, they were all sort of hand-built. The planetarium took off, and it became clear that another instructor was needed to better serve the facility. So a former Earth science teacher from Michigan, by the name of Dr. James Orgren, was hired and became the ESSL's co-director along with Mr. Kearns. Dr. Orgren's role was to focus on instruction for junior high and high school groups, while Mr. Kearns focused on elementary instruction. It was during Dr. Orgren's tenure that he and Mr. Kearns created the geology lab at the ESSL. 
They rounded up rocks and minerals from all over Frederick County and from their stockpile. Every school in FCPS was able to have their very own Frederick County Rock and Mineral Collection. This county is, is uniquely placed ge geologically. This, this county is really a, a very unusual geologic province and uh, uh, there is so much here. And it's all old, the oldest, uh, the oldest rock in uh, the eastern United States uh, you can find here, right down Jefferson's Steiner Hill. They were also vital to the creation of the Mid-Atlantic Planetarium Society, or MAPS, which still exists today. The purpose of MAPS was for different school systems to come together and share planetarium instructional approaches and to brainstorm ideas about astronomy demonstrations. When Dr. Orgren went on to pursue a new opportunity as an astronomy professor in 1966, a teacher named Ed Yurkovich found himself walking in the door as the ESSL's third director. I came to Frederick County Board of Education in 1964. I was hired by Frank Lewis, who was the principal of West Frederick Junior High School. I frankly, to this day, don't know how I got this job with the planetarium. I don't know if I applied. I don't know if Ned said, maybe that guy can do it, or if Frank Lewis wanted to get rid of me. I'm not <laughs> sure which one it was. Mr. Yurkovich loved his time at the ESSL, but one particular moment has resonated with him all these years. The Maryland School for the Deaf is just across the street up there. Every once in a while, one of their instructors up there would ask if they could come to the planetarium, and I would, obviously, I said yes. And uh, Ned probably, maybe he'd just find out about it, but I would bring those children in there, and they were so, they were the most beautiful children in the world, but they were looking at the stars, but I would crank this volume up, and I probably broke all the speakers. I can remember one beautiful little girl just the expression of her face, she must have heard something. And I will never forget that as long as I live. I tell it to my wife, I told it to my kids before, and that was fantastic. During this period, he and Mr. Kearns established a partnership with the mother of all partnerships, NASA. This led to FCPS becoming one of the first school systems in the nation to receive models of the American Manned Space Program. For a time, a full-scale model of the Apollo spacecraft was on display at the ESSL. By the end of the 60s, Mr. Kearns, Dr. Orgren, and Mr. Yurkovich had successfully brought students into the space age. But like the space program, it was now a new era for the ESSL. During the summer of 1969, American eyes were fixed on space exploration. The United States put the first men on the moon with Apollo 11, and the fascination was shared by young and old. Students of Frederick County Public Schools couldn't wait to go to the planetarium and imagine themselves as astronauts and scientists. Charlie Lambert came on board as the lab's fourth director in the 1969-70 school year. Over the next 14 years, he watched a generation of students pass through the geology lab, the glow-in-the-dark hallway, and the planetarium. As the Apollo mission came to an end during his time at the ESSL, Mr. Lambert was now poised to launch students into the next phase of space exploration with NASA's Skylab program and the launches of the Voyager space probes. Along their journeys, both probes made astounding discoveries about the gas giants in our outer solar system. Mr. Lambert loved teaching students all about the fascinating knowledge that was being uncovered in these missions. As the pictures came pouring in across space, Mr. Lambert had the idea to convert them to slides. And where better to see those pictures than on the dome of the ESSL's planetarium? Students were learning about whole new worlds. They were seeing Saturn's rings, Jupiter's moons, and the beauty of Uranus and Neptune like no one had ever seen. In 1983, Mr. Lambert retired from what he considered to be the greatest teaching position available in Frederick County. Over 20 years had passed and tens of thousands of students had walked through the ESSL under the leadership of four directors. Now there was a fifth. His name was Craig Cutler. 
Coming from Governor Thomas Johnson Middle School as a science teacher, Mr. Cutler saw a substantial change to the elementary science curriculum. My very first year, I just finished teaching 25 years, I, my first job was third grade and uh, my room was right beside the old Earth, Space and Science Lab. And um, I didn't realize how incredible it was that my position in the county of all the places could be right there beside of that. And Craig Cutler was the director. And I just remember his enthusiasm. He would come over and I think he was given the job of, of trying to change it from just a planetarium into an Earth, Space, Science Lab. Even though there had been a geology lab, the primary instructional focus of the ESSL had always been space science. Now things expanded a bit. Not only were students going to learn space science and geology, oceanography was introduced. They changed the curriculum and they changed all the activities so that if the students were studying geology, when they came, the activities were about geology. And if they were studying um, oceanography, I taught third grade for a long time, then they did all kinds of things with oceanography. I had not been to the Earth Space Science Lab before, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but it was just, it was a wonderful experience because it tied in so well with what I was teaching in the classroom, and the children just got to experience everything. They had the freedom to go around to the different stations that they wanted to, and um, they just got to um, just interact with science. Kids were in awe of the ocean and all its natural wonders. When Mr. Cutler's mission came to an end, he left the ESSL more interwoven with FCPS curriculum than it had ever been before. While the new space shuttle program was underway with NASA, two young teachers were about to embark on the greatest journeys of their careers. Mark Bowman and Jeff Grills both applied for the two openings that were available. Mr. Bowman was an experienced science teacher when he came to Frederick County to teach at New Market Middle. I had grown up with the space program, so that was always a, an excitement level and enthusiasm level for me. I was in sixth grade when Alan Shepard first went into space. I just finished my freshman year in, at University of Maryland when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. So those milestones that happened in our country's space history were milestones that I didn't always together realize at the time were happening in my life that may be led up to and into that interview in 1988. Ned Kearns, the original ESSL director, was on the interview panel, and Mr. Grills remembers Ned being a little apprehensive at the notion of hiring him. One of the things that Ned said to me at that time was, I'm really concerned that you don't have the science background to work at this facility. And I thought for a second, and of course this is 25 years ago, but I, I think I said, uh, I know more than the third graders do. And that was enough for him, but uh, that was then, and since that time, there's been a lot of self-education that's gone along with this whole program. Mr. Grills and Mr. Bowman picked up where Mr. Cutler had left off, but it didn't take long for them to start adding their own innovation to the facility. We expanded on the oceanography program, and within a few years, first grade turned to weather, and it really truly became an earth, earth and space science facility at that time. I've been into a number of planetariums over a number of years while working at the Earth and Space Science Lab and even before working at the Earth and Space Science Lab. I always kind of dreaded the experience of walking into a planetarium and never meeting the director of that program or that show. They would somehow, the operator would get behind the console and begin the show and there would be never any live audience interaction, no question answer or uh, currently what's in the sky. And so I know Jeff Grills and I have always tried to humanize our approach to the audience. And over the years, the Science Department of Frederick County Schools and the Earth and Space Science Lab, we worked a lot to change and improve the curriculum and we built our kits. Uh, we, we, were, we had so many kits that we built uh, during the 1990s that nowadays professional companies build. And that was something that we were able to do and build lessons to go along with the materials that teachers would use. Since the 1960s, the ESSL has put on evening shows for families in the community, showcasing the lessons that students experience during the school day. These shows have always been very popular, and audiences grew when Mr. Bowman and Mr. Grills continued to add more shows as the years went on. 
The evening shows are an integral part of what we uh, do, and not only for the school community, but for the larger community of Frederick County and even outside of Frederick County. So it's nice when you get calls that come in in our day programs for uh, use of the facility and know that we're a public school facility that operates by the school day and the school year, and yet there are opportunities for uh, anyone to come in from anywhere for those evening public shows. FCPS was growing. When Mr. Bowman and Mr. Grills started, there were about 10,000 students in Frederick County. By 2009, that number had quadrupled. What was already a tight space at Lincoln Elementary for the ESSL was getting tighter. Mr. Bowman and Mr. Grills knew that they had to start thinking about the future. This expansion, you know, we originally started as a res uh, renovation idea for the old building, which is really, really great that that didn't happen since the old building's been torn down now. Uh, that would have been embarrassing. We were always looking forward and looking forward with the anticipation of the, and the excitement of what we knew this new facility would come to be. Before we had such scheduling conflicts at the old place, I guess I couldn't wait to grow out of the old place, to be honest. The setup was very, it was a very small place. The kids worked in the hallways and uh, there were only two hallways and a there was a little room in the back and then a, a couple of other little rooms. And sometimes there were 60 kids in those hallways and 20 to 30 adults helping. And in the um, planetarium itself, there would be another show going on with perhaps another 60. So you had about 150 to 200 people in a small area. When I think back now, I don't know how they did it. Having two classrooms moving around. We would be flip-flopping back and forth between the planetarium, the work areas, the classroom. And it was a real juggling act, act at that time. But uh, that was, I would guess, pretty much the catalyst that began our, our move towards uh, the idea of the, the new facility. What started as a dream had now become a reality thanks in part to generous donations from fundraisers. Such a state-of-the-art facility would not exist without the community effort that took place on many levels. There were large benefactors who gave huge amounts of money, but there were also so many children who gave money from their allowance, uh, school children who in their classroom collected, uh, schools that donated to it, and I think that was really um, helped to illustrate the support that the community has had for this place over the years. We had a buy a seat campaign. Every seat in the planetarium theater is paid for by uh, public funds. Uh, we had a buy a stone campaign out front of our facility with the earth moon model. They're set up for scale size, they're set up for scale distance, and the stones between the earth and the moon are the contributors to that project. So that was a $30,000 project that was again, uh, funds were raised and the project was paid for all out of public funds that were donated and um, so we needed that kind of support and, and strength to draw from. The summer we moved in was a phenomenal partnership between current on-staff teachers as well as the science curriculum specialist and um, central office staff as well. We literally packed up from our building across the street, drove it across the parking lot, and then when we got here we began unpacking and visualizing what we wanted the new place to look like. We knew that we wanted it to be even bigger and more exciting than what we had had, and so as we walked through the empty rooms that were just white walls, we started talking with the teachers what could they envision to be a childlike experience that would be second to none in the county. 
One of the things that was talked about about the first Earth and Space Science Lab that was so exciting for students to come and it was the glow-in-the-dark wall. And that was that was the one that was one of the, of the make or break deals for so many people who contributed private money to the building of this new Earth and Space Science Lab. They wanted to make sure we had an ultraviolet light hallway of some sort. And that that still to this day it's it's no difference in technology. It's just the idea that things can fluoresce in, with using the, the UV lights. And students still, no matter how old they are, uh, are always amazed by that particular uh, feature. When we moved here, we decided, we, we said, what we want to do is make this a museum quality facility. We want to make it something uh, unique, spectacular, something that, that has an impact on our community and I think we've done that. It's like magic. It's a, it's a magical place, it's a charming place. They, um, they know not to run from exhibit to exhibit because they know that they, uh, if they stay long enough at the different exhibits they'll get to gobble up all the details, which they love to do. And if you ask kids in Frederick County what their favorite field trip is, it's going to be this one. It happens all the time. It's actually my favorite field trip as well. When you're at the National Aquarium in Baltimore, which is wonderful, a lot of times the kids run from exhibit to exhibit because there's so much and it's so big. And here, when they come, they actually have centers to do, and so they focus down on the tanks. Even though it has that same R, they can hold a starfish here, they can hold a sea urchin, um, they can actually look at a turtle and figure out like, you know, how many, what the claws do. I brought my three and five year old grandsons here and they were totally charmed. And um, a couple of weeks later, my son said to me, Mom, just want you to know I was taking Gregory over to the Air and Space Museum and when we were finished, Gregory said, this is nice, Dad, but can we go back to Frederick County where Grandma goes to, takes me to the ESSL? And I thought, boy, if that's not an endorsement, I don't know what is. And the first thing I did was sit down and, and email it to Mark and Jess so that they would hear it from the mouth of a five year old. Starting from the ground up, everyone involved was able to maximize every square inch of the building. Habitats were created in the wall for specific creatures, areas were built for certain science units, and different classrooms were designed for different types of instruction. There's even an outdoor arboretum adjacent to the building where students can learn about trees and study them as they grow. And starting in the 2012 school year, the construction of the new observatory, yes, you heard it right, observatory, will be complete. Students and families will be able to see the sun up close and even the outer planets with their very own eyes. I always have felt that young children have um, a sense of wonder and awe about nature. And it's interesting, I think sometimes as adults, we begin to take the natural world for granted. And I remember um, when my two sons were young, I can remember walking with them and walking through the woods and uh, when I'm looking at a butterfly, I'm just totally fascinated. And it was really neat to be able to see the world again through a new set of eyes. And I think one of the greatest things about being a grandfather is getting to see the world again through a third generation of eyes. And uh, it's very exciting to do things with the kids. and. The, their involvement in the natural world and their interest is, uh, is very exciting. Before, remember the terrapins were just in a tank? Yeah. So you really got to see a terrapin up close. We've never seen one before. But now it, you, can, you can see it up close and it looks like where a terrapin should live. And so that's, you just, you know, that's, that's a wonderful thing for kids to see the different habitats that animals live in in Maryland and in Frederick County. We might never see a stingray, but here when you walk in the doors, oh, there's a stingray. Well, I've never seen one of those before, but here it is right in our own community. You don't walk into Walmart and see all this stuff, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it blows your mind at all the stuff they have and all the animals and all the things that you can learn. It's, it's really cool. And then, of course, there's the new planetarium, the old Spitz projector, had served FCPS very well. But, like the stars it projected for nearly 50 years, its time eventually came to an end. The new projector, like the Spitz in its day, is state-of-the-art. It's a Goto Kronos optical projector 
and ENS D3 digital projector hybrid. Yes, it's as sophisticated as it sounds, capable of putting on full dome productions with clarity much greater than before. The Kronos can project more than seven times the amount of stars than the Spitz. On a dome that is nearly twice the size as the original, the night sky is truly stunning to see. Students and adults are continually amazed and the evening shows are more fantastic than ever. Now it's five computers and a lot of programming and understanding how it works. The incredible digital equipment that we've, we've been blessed with here and be, being able to put on full dome productions and just wonderful special effects and it's been a real step in, in a different direction. You can come in here and pay $2 and see these unbelievable shows that you would pay $10 to $12 at an IMAX theater to watch. You know, there aren't that many planetariums around and um, usually they're in big cities and you have to make a special trip to get there. We have so many parent volunteers that want to come on this trip that we have to have them drive separately or it would take another bus because the parents love it. They just, it, it brings out the kid in you. The technological advancements aren't just limited to the planetarium. The entire facility is equipped with cutting edge technology to take the learning experience for visitors to a whole new level. I believe the, the new building is, that both of the buildings were innovative, but it's just innovative in a different way. Times have changed, so they've really incorporated a lot of different technology into the different activities. We have Promethean boards here, so while the directors are doing lessons, students can actually interact with the lesson. Uh, we as well have different things like QR codes around here, so when um, parents come with their children, they can actually scan the QR code and they can find out interesting information about the animals. It's really nice to see how technology has advanced so much and then when we have it in this facility it really does show our interest in providing the best for our students and for our community. For 23 years Mark Bowman and Jeff Grills have worked at the ESSL. Their devotion to teaching, innovation and working with colleagues to provide the best learning experiences for students has been as much of a gift to the FCPS community as the ESSL itself. They have followed in the footsteps of great directors and worked closely with curriculum specialists, teachers and artists creating a true place of learning for students, opening their eyes to science exploration and the wonders of the universe. We, we have uh, we've been very blessed to have uh, uh, a good working relationship. Jeff and I are in our 23rd year, and it has been a special working relationship over the years. We have worked hard and diligently together. We both, I think, have a strong work ethic, and um, we thought when we first came here, we might be here for seven years. We didn't think we'd be here as long as Charlie Lambert, who was here 13 years. We thought we'd both be off-site by then. The, amazing ability that we've had to be, to be creative and flexible and be able to strive to do new things and different things in the Frederick community and be a part of the school system. That's probably the best thing that I'll take from this. When you see the students when they first come to you and there may be some rowdiness, I always tell them, well, it's okay to be excited. If you didn't get excited about this place, then I think there'd be something wrong with you so I can see there's nothing wrong. But when they leave you, they're sincerely, some will come up and just automatically give you a hug and shake your hand and a thumbs up and uh, just a greeting in a positive way. They can't wait to get back to this place. Mark and Jeff are the, the, uh, the big kids in the building, okay? And so they are constantly remaking themselves and the facility because they love it as much as the kids do. And so I think the things that thrill them are the same things that thrill the children. I think that this building and the old Earth, Space and Science Lab we're just perfect examples of when someone has vision and someone has passion and the know-how, how you can just get your dream to come true. To me, that was that building and then this building just evolved from that with just people that were ready to take it to the next level. And um, it's, been, it's been cool to see that happen, it really has. I would have never have imagined 25 years ago when I started in that building in that little room that this would ever be the next step. It has been 50 years since Ned Kearns opened the doors to the ESSL. 
Seven directors have watched over half a million wide-eyed students and adults experiencing the thrill of learning. It's a place where anyone can visit and leave knowing more than when they arrived. It's truly spectacular, and the future of the ESSL is bright. It's not finished yet. We're going to go on and continue to improve. Every year, students and faculty come back to this place. They should see new and different things. The ESSL is the jewel of Frederick County. Every child remembers it. Every child can tell you something about it. When people walk through the door, they're going to remember what happened to them here, not because of the facts they learn, but because of the the sights, the sounds, the things that they see, the energy and excitement of the people around them. And that's a, a lasting memory that makes a difference in people. And children often will, will have an experience like coming here and it can transform or change what they decide to do with their lives. A lot of people don't, in this county don't understand the, uh, how fortunate the county itself is in the leadership that was provided to get these facilities. Uh, this facility as it stands today is absolutely state of the art. I doubt if there's, a, uh, there's anything better in any school system in the country. And I know that 50 years ago, uh, this was, the, uh, Frederick County was the model uh, for uh, Earth and Space Science Laboratories. I just can't speak well enough of uh, particularly Quentin Earhart and uh, Dr. Sensenball. They wanted to see this facility work, and it did.